Oh, hello everybody! It has been a while. If you're new to the channel, this is my 1917 farmhouse. Back in the day when this was built, this was considered to be the most improved 120 acres in the entire state of Iowa. So this house was an absolute showpiece. My goal is to bring this house back better than its original glory of what it used to be in the early 1900s. I've been working on the house for two years and I've been working on the property for five years. So during the five year period of time, we've taken out about a million pounds of scrap steel out of this grove area. We tore down all the grubby trees that were kind of like those, but a lot bigger that were in the front yard, brought a bulldozer in, leveled everything off planted some nice Kentucky bluegrass, we put a new roof on, we put new windows in the attic, we ripped all the original siding off, we have half of it sided right now, as you can see, the other half is currently under Tyvek. Now we've also got a really nice start on this wraparound porch, goes all the way down that side, goes way down there. Since last summer, we had a derecho come through and destroy our old bin site facility. So we've been spending all our time and resources this summer building a new one. So right now the work on the house is, well, on the outside, it's a little bit of a standstill. But the good news is on the inside, we still have plenty of work that needs to be done. We still need to get all the old plaster and stuff off in this main hallway area. And then inside the rooms, we're gonna be reshaping rooms, redoing plumbing, redoing the old knob and tube wiring. Basically, we're doing a full gut start over remodel. But before we can do any of that, these three rooms that we're looking at right now have absolutely zero insulation in them. So I need to get these cleaned out because I have some spray foam insulation guys that are gonna be coming. They're gonna get the spray foam insulated. So that way this is gonna be tight. I'm gonna be able to keep this warm up here and we'll be able to work in here during the winter time to start building some of these upstairs rooms. We have a brick wall right there that we need to get out. We need to get this old bathtub out of here. And I also have some brick over here that I need to get out. Not to mention all this trash. As always, safety first. Hmm, that doesn't seem exactly very strong. As of right now, this bathroom has taken me longer to just get the brick off the walls than it would take for me to gut an entire room. Hard to get that door open. Boy, oh boy. Look at that, guys. No more brick by the radiator. I think I can cry. When it comes to any type of demo, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's a lot of work. But when they built this bathroom and they lined it with brick, they must have used the best brick known to humanity because it took me longer to just to get this brick out as it did to, for me to do that room over there, this room here, full plaster, full lath, full insulation plus clean up. So it feels really good <laughs> to get this out of here. I take that back. I got three bricks right there, three quarters of a brick there and half a brick there. It was getting dark on me last night and I couldn't see. But my goal was to get the exterior wall done so that way we could have it ready to be insulated. So four bricks, we're close enough. Looking through our little peephole here, this room still has the lath on it because it has insulation behind. But I mean, as you can see by those nice Peepholes outside, a lot of it's settled, so it's not doing a very good job. But there still is insulation in the wall. The rest of the upstairs is just like this, so we're gonna leave those exterior walls. But starting right here inside this closet, I am going to be putting in closed cell spray foam insulation. They'll come in with the sprayer, spray it on, it just looks like paint, and then it grows away from the wall. It'll get about two inches thick, and then it gets hard. And once it gets hard, it will never move, so it doesn't settle. But it also adds structural integrity to the building. I believe it makes it 300% stronger. It doesn't let wind blow through it. And it's also an insulator, so it's gonna keep our heat in, keep the cold out, or keep the cool in, and keep the heat out. And what's nice about it being only two inches thick is I still have room inside my wall cavity here, so that way I can run my wiring since I don't have time to get everything pre-wired before they insulate stuff. 
So, I mean, maybe not necessarily ideal. We'll at least still be able to get this sealed up this winter and be able to get some wiring done too. If anyone has any good ideas on how to get this bathtub out of here, I would really appreciate it. That sucker is heavy. There's no way I'm lifting it down the stairs. I mean, no way. That thing's like 500 pounds, at least. We are going to be running into a little waste when it comes to the ceiling, because like I mentioned earlier, my attic has zero insulation in it, and it needs a considerable amount of work to get that ready to be insulated. So we're gonna have to put insulation in this ceiling, but the only problem is those boards are the ones that have been up in the attic forever, and birds lived in the attic here for like 20 years. And so all these birds pooping and doing their whole thing on those boards, I would kind of like to rip up all those boards and just replace it with plywood so when we redo the floor in the attic everything will be nice and we just don't have any possible toxins or anything trapped in that wood underneath of us because I, I feel like you'd never be able to get rid of smell or anything you know once it's in the wood it's in the wood since we're running out of time before it starts to get really cold i don't exactly have a lot of choice if i left that without insulation i mean the money i'm going to be wasting having insulation up there would go straight into my heating bill. So I'll walk you guys through what I'm planning for these rooms real quick. And I'll start over here. So this is gonna be the master bedroom, the, the main master bedroom upstairs. I plan on making every room up here into a master suite, but this is gonna be mine. So this one's, this one's gonna be even more special. I'm kind of debating on ripping out this wall, ripping out that wall, which is the closet for the other room on the other side. Then we'd gain like an extra two and a half feet on the width of the room. Not exactly sure if I want to do that yet or not. And yes, I am aware all the walls I will be talking about are load bearing, but there's things that we can build to get around that. On the other side of the room, then we have the start of the bathroom wall. This wall will be coming out. The other side of the bathroom wall will be coming out. Once again, load bearing walls. When we get into this part of the house, this is going to become a master closet. So we'll be able to walk through access all the clothes and stuff and then there's going to be a bathroom over here with a shower on it and a sink and everything so we're still working on a couple different design layouts on how that's going to look but essentially these two bedrooms and bathroom are going to be turning into one bigger bedroom a bathroom and a walk-in closet and yes as much as i love radiators and the heat they provide when we're tearing everything out like this and building new, I'm just going to be putting in ducting so that way we can have air conditioning, but it's gonna be forced air heat. But with the spray foam insulation, it should be a nice, comfortable forced air heat. Every house, well, not every house, my college house didn't have it, but my parents' house has radiators. Our main heated shop has a heated floor and it's so radiant heat. This house has radiators. So I've always been used to radiators and these are not the steam ones. You can actually touch these. They just provide nice warm heat. And I like them because it always stays even. So you never have the, oh, it's getting warm in here. And then the air shuts off and then ah, it's starting to get cold. And then it bumps back in. These just stay consistent. So there's one of them in here, obviously one in the bathroom. And then there's one in that back room. So it's going to be kind of nice in a way though, because they are kind of ugly to look at, and they do take up a lot of space. In the end, this door won't be here anymore. It'll be sealed off. This will actually probably be the shower area. And then it'll kind of L around. or probably be a sink here somewhere, and then we'll have a toilet. I'm not exactly 100% sure on layouts yet, but then this door will also not be here. And the size of this area is a little bit deceptive because there's a closet here. Oh, I can go around, I can show you from the outside. Yeah, there's this big old closet there that sticks in like four feet. So we can just rip that out and then connect right up to where we have the closet here. Add a considerable amount of space to the room. I've never had a big bathroom before. I'm always used to like, you're sitting on the toilet, your knees are in the bathtub kind of thing. And then you can also wash your hands at the same time because everything's just crunched in there. I mean, the current design of this bathroom is a good testament to that. I mean, you can get a manicure at the same time. Manicure, pedicure. You can get a pedicure at the same time you're using the john. My favorite part about all of this is this closet is also going to be disappearing. We're going to be taking this wall out, or at least half of it, so I'm gonna put a staircase right here because right there on the other side of that is the landing for the attic. So I think that'd be a cool, really cool space because you'd be able to walk through and you have a kind of secret entrance up to the attic. I want to make the attic into a super cool lounge studio. I don't even know what you want to call it area, but it's gonna be really cool up there. So that is pretty much the plan going forward with these 
two and a half rooms. This is the, the area we're gonna be working on first. As far as everything else goes, in the upstairs, I just have plaster and lath in this main hallway yet. If it rains later this week, I might have one of my friends come out and help me get this stuff ripped down. All the other rooms are, I mean, they look just like this. So it won't take them very long to get ready and be in the condition that this main one is. I know on the next time around here that I do this, when it came to all that rock wool insulation that was in here, I brought it out in trash bags. I brought out like 5,000 pounds of insulation or something like that in trash bags. A lot of trips up and down the stairs. In these rooms, the people who spray foamed our dryer shack, they actually do insulation evacuation. Is that a thing? They have a giant vacuum cleaner that they can put out the window and then they can suck everything up bring that insulation down to a bin won't be nearly as messy so i'm just going to hire them to do that for the rest of my ceilings upstairs and the exterior walls and then they can just come right behind and spray foam insulate picking back into the main master bedroom we're going to have another master suite style room over here so this wall is actually going to be coming down in here and we'll have a nice big room and as for the room that is across the hall we're going to be doing the same thing with this one as well it's going to be master suite style but part of the house that is needed for the rest of the master suite doesn't exist yet. Oh, three master suite bedrooms sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? Well, uh, how about four? Down the road, I want to tear this garage down. because Right now, it's literally falling apart. But then I'd be able to attach a new garage to the house and then could build some more space there and I'd have plenty of room above it. So this wall could come out. We could have more space up here. Build the third master bedroom. And then the fourth one would be on that new addition. So that would be my main room. The one that's going to have my underground movie theater below it. These other master suites are in the plants. I and mean, this is this is kind of long goal here. But the ones that we're working on right now is this one. And yes, I am very aware that three master suites is overkill and completely unnecessary. And so is four. But... Back in 1917, when they built this house, everything about it was completely unnecessary and overly the top lavish. And like I said, we're going to be restoring this to its original glory. So we have to bring it up to the 21st century standard of what the 1917 version was. So we're just going over the top with everything. I am going to be doing absolutely as much of the work as I possibly can. Honestly, on a remodel, the demo is kind of one of the most expensive parts other than the bathroom in the kitchen. Nothing too hard about it. It just takes a lot of time. So a lot of time equates to a lot of hours, a lot of hours is a lot of pay. I know how to wire lights, light switches, outlets. Yes, we are going to be getting rid of this knob and tube wiring. We're gonna be putting in the whole new good stuff. I'm not really sure on the boxes. I know they're not that hard, but good news is I have friends and family who can help me with all that stuff. If I have any questions, you know, they'll show me stuff. They can come in and inspect my work. And for the main construction stuff, my neighbor, Justin, he's a professional carpenter. He comes, he helps us. I mean, he does all the really hard parts. I hold things, but I can help him. We can also do it on our own time. So it, yes, it takes longer, but at the end of the day, we're not hiring a big crew to come in. This is a lot cheaper for us. So if I was paying contractors to come in and do all this crazy stuff, I probably would not be able to afford to do it. But since we're doing it the slow, old fashioned way, this is how we're gonna swing it. So just taking a long, hard look, ladies and gentlemen, because, I mean, this is potentially the last time any of this is ever going to look like this. And I'm excited about that. And I know a few people are gonna be upset about this floor because I don't have anything on it. I'm walking on it, I'm scratching it. Technically, I'm ruining it, but it doesn't really matter because this is not going to be the floor that I'm using. Number one, where these walls are sitting, when these come out, that board's gonna be coming out as well. So how do you make that match all the way through? The bathroom also has a different style floor. But the main reason is when we have everything else got it apart and we're putting all this money and resources into everything up here to make it look nice, I don't wanna be walking across the floor and hear it creak. I'm a really big fan of dark laminate planking. So I'm probably gonna end up going with something like that for the entire floor upstairs. Once again, is it necessary? No, but laminate planking is cool. It's over the top, so that's what we're gonna do. It's a theme, it's a theme around here, it's over the top. I think we just found a new motto for the house project. Over the top, baby. So that's where we're at with the remodel stuff up here, making progress. It's gonna be exciting when we really start getting on this stuff here. Harvest is getting closer to wrapping up. One more time to work on this kind of thing. But in the meantime, that's what I got. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.